because pathophysiology nobody knows what to yes. talk exactly yeah uh, so i think we are live on youtube so yes welcome, we are live on youtube yeah, yeah i welcome everyone uh, for this 64th master class series and in that the fourth the class on reproductive immunology so as uh, we have spoken uh, in the last three classes about reproductive immunology i hope all of you have watched it if you have not i think they are worth watching and uh, as i think we are all familiar with uh, dr j's uh, scientific knowledge which has been a game changer in fertility practice for many uh, along with that i would like to tell you that like you know i mean he's a great guy uh, when it comes to his uh, personality i have been associated with him for uh, quite a few months now so we express our uh, empathy compassion when uh, we see somebody in pain so i was just reading this where there are very very few people who express their joy when somebody else is successful i think uh, dr jay is one person who has always like cheered for uh, everybody's success without feeling that envy and jealousy and this is one of the great qualities which i admire in him so over to you to talk about the, the, the intralipids today so i'll start with the screen sharing madam just stay live and see if the screen is visible uh is the screen visible yes yes okay fine so uh see guys again i will come straight to the topic okay intralipids infusion okay in fertility practice basically in cases of failed ivf or recurrent abortions all right so basically the criteria is again the same you should have had more than two recurrent pregnancy losses preferably of idiopathic origin preferably at less than 8 weeks of gestation with cardiac activity okay this is preferable or rather this is one of the indications second is more than two implantation failures now when i talk of implantation failures i am also trying to tell you that the embryo has to be pgta euploid this is a very very important point with normal endometrium so when i tell you it is normal endometrium what should i rule out okay it should be euploid embryo okay and any form of endometritis should be absent any anatomical defect in the uterus okay should be absent now that is when you are giving yourself a good shot of calling something as a idiopathic mechanism where we try to blame a query query immune mechanism for causing infertility okay now whenever you experience this you have multiple options the options the three or four empirical options i am going to write down the primary empirical options is steroids immunomodulators okay or immunomodulators i am also going to write down intralipid because that is something which we will be discussing today okay i will also write down ivig and i will also write down something called as thymosin alpha so we will take a session on each and every one of them let me tell you let me make a disclosure that this is one molecule which currently i am experimenting with okay so this is something which i am experimenting right now okay ivig and intralipids both these are extremely wonderful guys including steroids but all of them have been proven to have extremely limited role okay the role is extremely limited the indications are extremely specific you can't have any random case where we you are infusing intralipids because remember when you talk of an intralipid the word itself no lipid is important it has two main chemicals one is soy proteins okay and the second one is lecithins all right now this is commonly available if you look how it is available in india currently it is available as a 250 ml infusion 
containing 20% of lipids. Okay. This is an important thing. It is going to cost you approximately 1100 rupees in India. It comes in a glass bottle or in a separate packing of its own. If not in a glass bottle, you can, if you don't have intralipids and you know, you are in a place where you say, Ki, yaar, mere pe intralipid milta hi hai. no problem. Intralipid is very, very similar to something called as parenteral nutrition. The only difference between intra intralipid and parenteral nutrition is parenteral nutrition has amino acids plus carbs. Okay. Plus lipids. Okay. This intralipid is only lipid. Okay. It is to be given as an IV infusion. It is to be given. When to give it is very important. It is to be given between day 3 to day 7 any time of HRT or modified natural cycle preparation for embryo transfer. So practically before you do the embryo transfer, transfer just say it can be approximately 7 to 10 days prior to doing the ET. Okay. Now that is the only thing which otherwise you need to keep in mind. Importantly, a lot of people ask and a lot of people always wonder, fine, I understood all these things. Please tell me the mechanism of intralipid. So the answer to exact mechanism of intralipid is I don't know. Okay. But uh, it is postulated. Okay. And it has not been proven. It is postulated that what this intralipids is actually going to do is that when it goes inside the body, when this intralipid goes inside the body, all right, it is going to ensure that whenever we are talking of natural killer cells, no, it ensures that these natural killer cells function through a pathway called PPAR pathway. Just ignore this one minute, please. This is just my itch, which is why I'm trying to teach this. Otherwise, you don't even need to know this. And it ensures that the cytogenicity, okay, it ensures that the cytogenicity of the NK cells go down. Now, if the cytogenicity of the NK cells go down, there is only one question that when you are giving it at the early phase of endometrial preparation, okay, in that situation, the total NK cells which are present are very, very less. As a result of which this intralipid infusion, which you have to give it at that time, okay, may or may not be able to go and act on all the NK cells. And as a result of which, unfortunately, the role of intralipids seems to be unproven. So now you can say, Are, I have a very smart logic. Jay, you are an idiot. We should give intralipids one cycle prior in the luteal phase of the previous cycle. Okay, you should give this in the luteal phase of the previous cycle where maximum amount of NK cells are present. So it will go and act. Yes, I do understand that you are very smart and you give me this logic. But what happens is then there is something called as a unique phenomenon which is called as menstruation. Okay, in this menstruation, all action of this intralipid simply gets shed out or washed out. As a result of which, you can't really get a 100% success rate. And as a result of which, okay, nobody knows the exact mechanism of action. And as a result of which, the benefit of intralipids is unknown. Okay, please remember one thing. This is to be given otherwise as a slow infusion. It does not go and cause any major side effects. You can give a test dose if you want to. Okay, in fact, we always give a test dose. So you can give a test dose of intralipids if you want to. And once you give the test dose of intralipid, then you can give the infusion slowly over the next one to two to three hours, whatever you like. Patient can watch TV, do some time pass and go home. Okay. It's otherwise a very economical procedure as compared to IVIG. IVIG is pretty expensive. Thymosin alpha is pretty expensive. IVIG is expensive. Steroids is not expensive. Intralipids is something in medium. Okay. Apart from this, Trust me, there is nothing else which you need to know as far as intralipid infusion is concerned. The role is extremely limited. Don't just try giving intralipid just because there was nothing else to give. Remember, more than 80% of the patients whom you are trying to give something like this, you will pick up chronic endometritis. More than 80% of the patients will have an abnormal embryo which underwent an abortion. Okay, so if in case you focus on the embryo and the endometrium a little bit more, you will end up solving 80% because, because the most important part of reproductive immunology is that it is the embryo which causes the immune reaction to occur. Isn't it? We have discussed it in our first lecture itself. So as long as you have a good embryo, all right, and you have a good endometrium, the euploid embryo and the endometrium will find their way. And usually, 
you will not have to do all these gimmicks in order to ensure that the patient becomes pregnant. All right. So with this, in fact, Dr. Shilpa said, what is there to talk in intralipids for more than two minutes? I still stretched it and spoke for approximately 12 minutes. I can answer maybe one or two questions and then we can conclude. Yeah. So do you do NK cell uh, activity before you give an intralipid no. to check? Uh, no. Okay. So uh, I think uh, what we are all trying to do when we are talking about immune modulation is about bringing in that pro-inflammatory uh, aspect wherein the I think the T2, the T helper cells from shift to the T2 from T1. Uh, you think with the intralipid, I mean, because we don't know how it acts, you think it works in a certain population of patients or you think 1,100 is not a great deal. I mean, you just give it to everybody between day two and day seven uh, and try because anyway, everybody is giving low molecular weight heparin. Anyway, everybody is giving like, you know, multiple uh, progesterones. So you think this is one of those empirical treatments wherein like you can just do it like an add-on? So honestly, if you look, people don't randomly give low molecular weight heparin. People don't randomly give, uh, the only thing which people give empirically most of the places across the world is ecosprin. Okay. Because, uh, you know, even if there is a small immune cause which is causing thrombosis for a factor which has not been picked up, the treatment is to give ecosprin, which is why people would give ecosprin, right? Otherwise, giving low molecular weight heparin or giving um, intralipids or, you know, you should give everything then. Give intralipids also. Give IVIG also because we don't know how it is going to work, right? So because we don't know how it is going to work does not mean that you go around the city stenting every person you see. You don't really end up stenting the heart of every person you see. Ah, you've come, chal, stent kar dete. Okay? I don't think uh, that's a fair logic. I personally don't even think uh, that is a scientific logic. And all the while, when we talk of science, I think this is one therapy which should be really reserved. Is what I okay. think. So, uh, do you uh, categorize the patients economically when you have to choose between intralipid, IVIG? Uh, no. You don't do that. And what is uh, the uh, say? Like, can it replace steroid? I mean, steroid is dirt cheap. It is available so easily, and you don't have to like you know do anything. Just like you know, they just take a pill for fifteen days, twenty days. Honestly, honestly, I think what is going to be the future is going to be a combination approach of like let's say something like thymosin alpha plus steroids or plus any of these things because all of them have a slightly different mechanism of action. And in my opinion, the one which is coming from the thymus where the T cells are predominating, okay, that is the best immune modulation which you can offer to anybody, not just to reproductive uh, system, you know, that is the best immune to anybody. In an infection-free environment, I'm again stressing on that fact of being infection-free because when you have chronic endometritis, when you have acute endometritis, there is a stark difference. These NK cells will be secondary. You are competing with neutrophils. Nobody yeah. can go and compete with neutrophils. Nobody can go and compete with macrophages or plasma cells. Nobody can do that. Okay, this T cell ka koi aukad nahi hai. To go and compete with a plasma cell, B cell, T cell, all that, it can't do. So that is the reason why it is important to have a good endometrium, good embryo first. Okay, when you have this, then you start thinking about the immunological causes and then you start thinking ke agar I have to give intralipid or not to give intralipid. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think uh, th that's right. But see, you don't know like where the intralipid, how it is going to modulate, whether it is through T cells, whether it is through B cells, I mean, through macrophage, whatever it is. So we are assuming because NK cell is 70% of the activity. So we are Correct. assuming that like, you know, that is modulating the NK cell. See, now the immune modulation happens, unlike what was thought before, like we have to suppress the immunity of the mother for her acceptance of the fetus. We are now moving towards the immunomodulation where like the friendly environment in the uterine, uh, uh, uterine space happens and then the fetus gets accepted. So this right. modulation happens through the NK cells and we assume that the intralipid is working through that NK cells, isn't it? So, but we are not checking the uh, uterine NK cells, nor are we checking even the peripheral NK cells. I don't know, like, you know, many uh, consultants who even do the peripheral NK cell activity. As it has I got think, no role. 
yeah it has got no role so uh, i still think like you know i think intralipid is one of the um, one of the players when you talk about like thymosin uh, where we spend around 25000 or 31000 rupees uh, on uh, uh, that therapy uh, we don't know i think uh, uh, in the future maybe i mean there may be lots more uh, information that we might get but at this point in time what is your take home point i mean with regard to only intralipid at this moment i think i i think at the moment intralipid should be reserved as a second line therapy it should not be a primary line therapy primary line therapy can either be giving steroids or probably i think the guy who comes closest to steroids is probably thymosin but then again robust data from thymosin is yet to come out conclusively so at the moment i think to be reserved as a, like a second line therapy really so, like a second line yeah, yeah in a month like i know that per month you do around 200 cycles 200 mg you do less than 10 a year intralipid yeah less than 10 in a year that's up i mean among like say 2000 mg transfers you do less than 10 yeah yeah because that's the only indication wow okay okay i mean i do at least like you know four in a month um, you are big people here yeah okay so even uh, if you ask them to drink the intralipid they'll drink it for you oh, we give so them at an we give it as an infusion no but it is so bad you know i mean it is so painful and uh, very we, painful very, very painful because it is so thick uh, because and it, it has, has to be given slowly that's why i said it slowly, has to be given slowly yeah. and it has albumin like the egg white yeah. uh, in, in that so it is extremely painful uh but i think what you said makes sense as of now with the current uh, studies whatever they say i think you are resonating the same thing uh, what the studies have told so i thank you for this i think it was a wonderful short session on intralipids great i thank everyone who have joined us i hope everybody watches the previous sessions because this makes lot more sense when you start from the beginning from the first uh, class of the 